Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to be showing you how to determine where your character, your mouse pointer, your finger touch is in your two-dimensional tile map if you're using a one-dimensional tile map array like I'm using right here. If you want to know how to set up a tile map, check out my last tutorial. That goes over how to set up pretty much this tile map, just different colors. Same code is going to be in here. I'm just going to go over how to calculate these three values, tile X, tile Y, and value. These are extremely vital to figuring out where your character or your whatever is inside of your rendered tile map. So what these are, tile X is the column position of your mouse pointer in the tile map. As you can see, I go all the way over to the left, that's position zero. I have 16 columns in my tile map, so if I go all the way to the right, I'm gonna have 15. Zero through 15 is 16 columns. I have nine rows, so my map is nine tiles high. So if I go to the bottom, I am at eight, and if I go all the way to the top, I'm at zero. The value is the value of the map at the tile position. So say I go to position zero in my map, I know that that's a one. And if I go here, I have a value of one. If I go to position, what is this, 17? If I go to position 17, I'm gonna have a zero. I'm at position 17, I got a zero. So basically, as you can see, using these two values, I can figure out what the value of a tile is in my tile map. Now this is really necessary for doing collision detection because say my mouse is a character and I want to see if he's standing on a lava tile or a walkable tile. All I have to do is see if the value is zero or one. And if it's a zero, I can walk and I'm cool. If it's a one, I'm standing on some lava. Even though this is green, it's more like I'm standing on some trees or some grass. You can also calculate the tile right next to your character. So say my character is at this position 17 right here, where my mouse is at right now. And I want to see, because he's moving to the left, I want to see what the tile is immediately to the left of my character. All I would have to do is say tile x minus 1 and plug that into my map lookup function and it would give me the value of the left tile, tile right next to where my character is. Same thing to get the right position, I would just add one to the character's tile x position and it would tell me what the value of this tile is. Same thing on the y coordinate, subtract one, gives me this, add one, gives me this. So it's really useful for determining collision detection. Right now, I'm gonna get to how to calculate these values. Come down to my game loop, I'm not gonna explain any of this other stuff. Already went over most of it in my last tutorial, so check that out for sure. And the first thing I do in my loop is calculate all these values. So I have tile x, tile y, and value, and they correspond to these outputs right here. Before you can calculate the value, you need to know where your mouse pointer is. So it's really simple how you do this. I'm going to take the physical pixel position of my mouse on the x-axis, and I'm going to divide it by the size of the tiles in my map. And this is, of course, assuming that the top left corner of your map is at a physical position of 0, 0. So when my mouse is here, my mouse position in my map is 0, 0. That's very important. I actually calculate that in the controller part of my code right here. I get the get bounding client rect of my drawing canvas and I basically just set controller dot pointer x to start out at the top left corner of my map. So that's pretty important to make a note of right there. Top left corner of your map is a physical position of zero zero. X is zero, Y is zero, and then it get it increases as you go to the bottom right. So to calculate tile X, we take the physical position of the mouse on the x-axis and we divide it by the size of our tile. So if we have a non-scalable tile map, you don't have to calculate it like this. You could just put in the size of your tile, say your tile size is 32. 
I could just put in 32 right here. But since my map is actually a scaling map, and you see just shrank there, now it gets bigger. Since it's a scaling map, you actually have to calculate it on the fly because the actual size of your rendering canvas, your tile map display canvas, is going to be changing. So we calculate it like this. We know we have 16 columns in our map, so we just take the width of our drawing canvas and divide it by 16. Same thing for the Y tile coordinate. You just take the height of your map and divide it by the number of rows in your tile map. And we know we have nine rows and we have 16 columns. So that's why we have nine and 16. So really simple and math.floor just rounds things down. So to give a more in-depth example of what's happening here, let's say right now my mouse is at Y position of zero. We're going to calculate the Y tile. And I'm going to move it to, let's say that's 10 right there. So our mouse is at 10. The y, the y position of my mouse is 10. So this is going to be 10. And I'm going to divide it by whatever this turns out to be. So let's say the height of my map is 320 pixels. And my tile size is 10. And I know this isn't the actual way it is, but... I just am going on the fly here. So I'm going to have, what did I say, 320 pixels high. So I'm going to have a tile height of 32. So if I'm at pos if my Y position is 10 of my mouse and my tile size is 32, I'm going to have 10 divided by 32. That's going to give me a number that's less than 1. Math.4 is going to round that down, and it's going to give me a Y position of 0. Same thing on the X axis. If I'm at 10... 10 divided by 32 is less than 1, it gives me 0. If I move over 1, now let's say my mouse position is at 33 right here. 33 divided by 32 is going to be 1 point whatever. Math.floor on 1 point whatever is just going to give me 1. And as you can see, my X tile is 1. So that's really simple. It's just division. And... You can't figure that out. I don't know how to help you, but fiddle around with it and it will come to you pretty quickly. So this here is the important part. This stuff is pretty simple. This took me a little bit longer to figure out. Um, it's basically how to translate two-dimensional grid coordinates into a one-dimensional tile map. So how do I get the value of the tile at this position from an X tile position and a Y tile position. Well, you do it just like this. You take the tile's Y position, multiply it by the number of columns in the tile map, and then add the tile's X position. So if I go right here, I have an X tile of two and a Y tile of one. So I would do one times the number of columns in the map. That would give me 16. 1 times 16 columns is 16. And then I would add 2 for the tile's x-coordinate. And that would give me 18. So if I go to my tile map and look at index 18, it's going to be 0, what the value is right there. And the reason it went to undefined right there is because my mouse actually went into no man's land over here. It's actually, I should have programmed something to prevent that, but doesn't matter doesn't really matter that much. So anyway, to give a more visual example of what is actually happening here, if I come up to my tile map and I come to this spot right here, which is going to correlate to this tile right here, and I put something in there, let's just say 324, and I refresh my browser and I bring my mouse over to that position, I'm going to get 324. And I shouldn't have done it there because I'm not going to multiply 14 by 16 in my head. So let's say we go back up here and do 23. Refresh my browser window. and Find that 23. There we go. I have a Y tile position of 1, and I have an X tile position of 13. So I multiply my Y tile by the number of columns in my map, which is 1 times 16, which gives me 16. And then I add 13, which is the X tile position. So 16 plus 13 is 29. 
So you can bet that this is index 29 in my code or in my map array is what that is. This is position 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So as you can see, everything lines up, the math lines up, and that little formula really works well for converting two-dimensional map coordinates to one-dimensional array coordinates, I guess you can call them, array indexes. And all that works hand-in-hand -hand really well with doing tile-based collision detection, not trying to save a file. I'm not really sure what happened there. So anyway, guys, the thing that you need to take away from all of this is how to calculate these three values. And in the next tutorial, I will be going over how to use these to do actual collision detection with like a moving character and all that stuff. If you want to know how to draw a two-dimensional tile map from a one-dimensional map array, go check out my last tutorial. And that's it. That's all I got to say. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. And if you did, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned because that next video is going to be pretty cool. Have a good day, guys. See you later. Mm -hmm.